Hello, and welcome to Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Halpin, and today we're going to compare data represented in line plots and circle graphs. For this lesson, you will need paper and a pencil or something else to write with. A calculator would also be helpful. We'll pause for a moment while you gather those materials. Now that you're ready, let's get started. There are two learning goals for today's lesson. We'll have one math goal and one portrait of a graduate goal. Let's take a look at today's math goal first. I am learning to compare data represented in a circle graph with the same data represented in a line plot. Our portrait of a graduate goal is focused on being a communicator. Our goal for today is that you can listen and ask questions so that you can understand the mathematics. Throughout today's lesson, write down any questions you might have. Ask a family member or a teacher your questions so that you can gain a better understanding of the content. What do you notice? What do you wonder? You might be noticing the numbers zero through six. Does this remind you of a number line? You might have noticed the X's above the numbers. Zero and four have the same amount of X's and one and six have the same amount of X's. You may be wondering, what do those X's mean or represent? Each X represents one student. How does this change your interpretation of the image? You might be thinking that since each X represents a data point, that this must, might be a line plot. What do you think this line plot might represent? Ms. Hogan is a sixth grade teacher. In September, she asked her students, how many books did you read over the summer? She collected the data and represented it on a line plot. A line plot is a graph that can display numerical or categorical data. The frequency of data can be easily seen on a line plot. For example, I can see that two students read one book. Line plots have a key so that we understand what each data point represents. Lastly, line plots will always have a title. The title of this line plot is Number of Books Read. Let's compare Ms. Hogan's line plot to the circle graph to the right. What is the same? What is different? Let's talk about what's the same. Both of these graphs are about books. You might have noticed that in the line plot, we can see that two students read one book and two other students read six books. This is similar to the circle graph. 20% of students selected biography as their favorite genre and 20% of students selected science fiction as their favorite genre. Both graphs have a key to help you understand what the graphs represent. Now let's talk about what is different these are two different graphs, a line plot and a circle graph. Line plots show each individual data point, and in this case, each X represents one student in Ms. Hogan's class. Circle graphs show the percentage of the whole. I can see the relationship between each category and the whole, but I cannot see individual data points or the total number of data points. These graphs are both about books, but the topics are different. The line plot asks a numerical question, how many books were read? Whereas the circle graph asks a categorical question, what is your favorite genre of book to read? Or what is your favorite type of book? Why might Mrs. Hogan survey her class on both of these topics? What might the purpose of each graph be?
If Ms. Hogan is planning to build her classroom library, she might want to know her students' favorite book genres. This information would help her to choose books her students will be interested in. It may also help her to plan lessons that will be exciting for her students. If Ms. Hogan would like to understand how often her students read, she might ask them about the number of books they read, read over the summer. This might help her to set a reading goal for her students throughout the year. Both questions reveal data that is very helpful for Ms. Hogan as she plans for her class. Although these graphs have similarities, their data does not match. The graphs display different data. Our learning goal for today is to represent the same data on a line plot and a circle graph. Let's think about how the data from this line plot could be shown or represented on a circle graph. Now we'll take the data represented in Ms. Hogan's line plot and create a circle graph. First, let's look at the data on our line plot. How many students were surveyed? I'll give you a little bit of time to think about that question. Since each X represents one student, I can count all of the X's and see that 20 students were surveyed. How might this help me construct a circle graph? Well, I know that 20 students represent the total or whole, so I can break the circle graph into 20 equal pieces. Each piece will represent one student or 1 20th of the circle graph. Now I need to see what fraction of the circle graph each category represents. Three out of 20 students read zero books, so I can shade in three out of 20 pieces to represent 3 20ths of the circle represented by that light blue. I can also see that three out of 20 students read four books. So I can shade in three out of 20 pieces to represent 3 20ths of the circle shown with that darker blue. Three students read zero books and three students read four books. From the line plot, I can see that only two out of 20 students read one book. I can shade in two out of 20 pieces of the circle graph to represent the two students that read one book. I can also see that two out of the 20 students read six books. My circle graph has two orange pieces shaded in to show that 2 20ths of the students read six books. And as you can see, as we're going along, we're really um, showing the color to represent each category. Wow, I see a lot of students read two books. So this should be the largest section of my circle graph. Six 20ths of the students read two books on the line plot and on the circle graph I can see six out of 20 pieces shaded in to represent the fraction of students that read two books. This is shown in green. Four twentieths of the students read three books. Again, I can ensure the data in my circle graph matches by shading four twentieths of my circle graph in that red color. The red section of the circle graph represents the students that read three books. I can see that no students read five books because zero out of 20 students read five books. I don't need to represent that on my circle graph. Let's make sure that the data is represented accurately. If I find the sum of all my fractions, I can see that I have data for all 20 students because 20 twentieths is equivalent to the one whole in my circle graph. So now I see how this data could be represented on a circle graph Let's find the percent for each category, which in this case is the number of books read. We know the fraction that represents each category. Now let's take some time to find the equivalent decimal and percent. 
In previous lessons, we have used our knowledge of equivalent fractions and a calculator to find the equivalent decimal. You could use either strategy. Before we start, take a moment to copy down the chart so you can keep track of your thinking. Let's start with 3 twentieths. For this one, I would like to use a calculator. 3 divided by 20 is equivalent to 15 hundredths, which is the same as 15%. I can also see that the category 4 books has the same fraction. So 15% of the students read 0 books and 15% of the students read 4 books. The percentages are the same. Now let's look at the decimal and percent of students that read one book. I'll give you a moment to do this on your own. What decimal and percent is equivalent to 2 twentieths? You might have simplified 2 twentieths to 1 tenth, or maybe you used your calculator. 2 twentieths is equivalent to one-tenth or ten-hundredths and ten percent. Ten percent of the students read one book. We can see that two-twentieths of the students read six books too, so we'll go ahead and represent that with ten percent. Let's look at the fraction of students that read two books. This is the largest category. I'll give you a moment to find the decimal and percent equivalent for six-twentieths. Six-twentieths is equivalent to thirty-hundredths and thirty percent. We can see that this is the largest part of the circle graph. The last section we need to determine is the decimal and percentage that read three books. I'll give you a moment to find that equivalent fraction in Four twentieths is equivalent to one fifth, which is the same as twenty hundredths or twenty percent. Twenty percent of the class read three books. Now that I have accounted for all the parts of my circle graph, let's make sure it adds up to one whole or one hundred percent. If I have the fraction, if I add the fractions, I have twenty twentieths. If I find the sum of all of the decimals, I have one whole, 1.00, and the sum of the percents is 100%. This means I have represented 100% of the class that was surveyed. Ms. Hogan surveyed her class on the number of books read. We represented this data using a line plot and a circle graph. Both graphs show the same data. Mathematicians often consider which type of graph makes the most sense for the data they want to represent. Line plots are useful for showing numerical data because you can see each data point and you can count the total number of data points. Circle graphs are useful for showing categorical data because you can see the relationship each category has to the whole. Both of these graphs represent the number of books that were read. I can think about the number of books read as separate categories as shown by colors on the circle graph, or I can represent the number of books read by using an X to represent each student. Either graph will work. Which graph works better for you and why? Let's revisit our math goals for today. I am learning to compare data represented in a line plot with the same data represented in a circle graph. What might be something new that you learned? What might you be wondering? 
Our portrait of a graduate goal was, I listen and ask questions so that I can understand. Did you think of some questions you might want to ask a teacher or family member? Listening and asking questions helps us to gain a deeper understanding of the mathematics. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Halpin. I hope you have a great day and keep on counting.